Okay, in today's lecture, we're going to talk about how to write good binary choice items. Okay, so binary choice items um, are when you choose from only two responses, hence binary. Um, mostly we think about binary choice items as true-false, but they could also be any kind of binary choice, like fact or opinion, or for younger children, we might use yes or no. There are propositional statements. They have to be declarative statements that make a claim, um, like Lansing is the capital of Michigan, or Peru is in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, the area of a square is found by mo multiplying the length of the height and the width. The proposal, propositional statement must be absolutely true or false. So you know how in multiple choice we were able to do um, the best answer? For binary choice, we really have to have it absolutely true or false. So what are some advantages of binary choice items? They're similar to the types of things you might have in class, like do you say, well, is that right or is that wrong? Um, they're quick to answer, so you can get a lot of binary choice items into a short amount of time. It gives us good item sampling. Um, scoring is objective and quick. Um, some disadvantages. Um, it's susceptible to guessing, right? It's only a 50-50 chance. Um, it's poorly, poorly worded questions could give hints to the correct answer. I think binary choice items are really the most difficult to write really well because they're so difficult not to give hints to the correct answer. They're really tricky um, to to write in a way that um, it's well written, I guess. Yeah, they're difficult to construct. And they're more difficult for English language learners and students with exceptionalities because they rely so heavily on understanding of the language because they're really relying upon a student's understanding of the language and the nuances of language, um, they can put students who don't have as much command of English at a disadvantage. So my, um, my preference here is I really dislike binary choice items. I don't think that for most content areas, they're really the best choice to use, but because they're so widely available within testing, I want to make sure I go over them. But, um, by no means do I think you should use them. I really, if it was my preference, I would say don't use binary choice items in your test that you're going to write for my class. I, I think they're really difficult to use well. Um, but I do want you to have a familiarity with how to write binary choice items and what kinds of things would make a binary choice item better or worse. Okay, so some guidelines. Um, write the items so the options are consistent and with the logic of the sentence. Um, so if you're testing spelling, it should be correct, incorrect, not true and false. Um, so here's an example. If I was look, if I was um, <laughs> studying asses and bases, then obviously the choices should be asses and base, not true and false, right? And actually, this is a really good example of how to use um, a binary choice item um, because they, really there's only two choices. Something is either an acid or a base. And by if that was something I wanted to assess in my chemistry class, this would be a really good way to do that. Um, there should only be one fact um, or idea from the item. If there's more than one fact, it's um, ambiguous. So if I said, you know, um, yeah, if there's two facts, then it's hard to understand. So in this example, Austin's the capital of Texas and Orlando is the capital of Florida. Well, if the answer are false, I don't know if it's because they think Orlando's the cap, they, they know that Orlando is not the capital of Florida, or they think that Austin isn't the capital of Texas. So it just leads to confusion about, um, about why they answered it correct. So, so the second one's better, right? Because it puts them in different categories. Um, avoid long sentences. Um, again, it reduces that ambiguity and the reading constraints. You can include more of them. And, um, it's, and there's less chances for the student to kind of get confused or to question. So um, the first president of the United States was George Washington, who was reelected in 1802, um, or George Washington was reelected president in 1792. The second one's better, right? Because I'm really just stating one fact. And the first one, again, there's a lot of statements there. And I mean, the part about being, him being first president's correct, but his re-election's not correct. It's just, it gets really confusing quickly. 
Um, avoid insignificant or trivial facts and words. Um, begin with what you believe are significant learning targets. And this is something that happens not just in binary choice items, but in a lot of item types where we're searching and we're trying to make our test longer, perhaps, or we want to have a certain number of a certain type of item. And so we start adding in insignificant details, maybe trying to be tricky for students or just to trying to fill out that, that test. And we end up with things that are maybe not as important. So really and truly make sure that what you put on the test is significant. Um, so in this example, um, the Earth is 92.96 million miles away from the Sun. Now here's the problem. Um, that what if the Earth is 92.95 million miles away from the Sun? Is it really important that how how many mi million miles away it is? It's really not. And with true-false, because those minuscule differences are um, are part of the question, it would be better if this was a multiple choice question. And then I could say, you know, is it 90 million miles or 92 million or 95 million or 96 million? And maybe those are the, that's the level of difference that would be important. But with a true false, there's really only right or wrong. And it's really, that's too trivial, too minuscule for a true false question. So it would be better to say something like the Earth is closer to the Sun than Mars. That's the level of detail that would be appropriate for a true false question. So just thinking about the type of question, the type of fact you're going to put into true false is important. Um, avoid negative statements. In fact, in binary choice items, you should never, ever, ever have a negatively worded statement because it gets very confusing. And part of this is because you have English language learners in your classroom. And remember that a double negative in other languages is, a, is um, still negative. So if I say, well, I'm not not going to do that, that means I might do it, right? But if I say I'm not not going to do something in Spanish, that means I'm not going to do it. So it can be really difficult for our English language learners to get all of that straight in their head much less a native English speaker. I still get confused when I try to read these things. So if I say that Arkansas was not part of the Confederate States in the Civil War, then I'm thinking, well, they weren't not part of the federal states. They were part of the federal Confederate States. And so it gets really confusing about whether or not to answer true or false. So I really should just say Arkansas was part of the Union States in the Civil War. And what happens is sometimes we're trying to balance out the trues and the falses in our um, true-false statements. And so the easiest way to do that is to add a nod into one of our statements and then all of a sudden it's false. Don't do that. It's lazy and it's confusing. So never ever add a nod or an accept or a negatively worded statement into your true false statements. Just reword the question to avoid that. Um, avoid clues in the answer. So never of all always are indicators of false answers because um, because absolute statements generally would be false, right? I mean, you just want to make sure that the trues and falses balance each other out more or less. Um, so if I say Frida Kahlo is usually considered a surrealist artist, that's an indication that it's true, right? Because I qualified that statement. Um, if because um, and then what do I mean by usually? Like how much does it have to be for it to be usually? It's not definitively true or false. So it just gets it adds in that ambiguity. It makes it more confusing. Um, don't try to trick students. Again, this is just a huge point to make in all of our items types. We're not trying to trick students. We can make things difficult without trying to trick them. Small words, word changes, trivial knowledge, it really just lowers the validity of the scores. So again, the Battle of Gettysburg began on July 3rd, 1863. It's just, it's a trivial fact. It's not really important to know what the time and date of the battle. It's more important to know that it was a turning point in the Civil War. Um, avoid using vague adjectives and adverbs because it's, those can be really interpreted differently and they're not equivocal, right? So one mile is approximately 1.5 meters versus one foot is 12 inches. That approximately, like how close does it have to be to be 1.5 meters? You really, really want to think about um, not using those kinds of usually, approximately, sometimes, because students might interpret those differently. They're not equivocally true or false. So we know that binary choice items can measure knowledge, right? Definitions, facts. Um, in Wuthering Heights, Heathcliff is a foil to Catherine. Silver is a conductor of, inner, of electricity. So these, they don't have to be easy necessarily. I still have to understand a lot about Wuthering Heights to understand that knowledge. But we're really talking about definitions and facts. And this is probably the best use of binary choice. 
We can also use binary choice to measure application, the transfer of knowledge to a new situation, just like we talked about with multiple choice items. Um, so other things being equal, an electric stove will, with greater resistance will be hotter than a stove with less resistance. So again, we're taking what we know about electricity and resistance and heat, and we're applying it to a new situation. Um, and then deep understanding, we can also use binary choice to measure deep understanding, um, factor, opinion, examples or non-examples, or logic. So in the example of logic, um, we're saying, um, and this is an example where you could use two parts, because we're wanting to say if the first is true, then the second part is true. And the key here is that we want the first part of every statement to be true. So we're not really measuring the first part, whether that's true or false, we're really measuring if that because makes something else true. So food is essential because it tastes good, or plants are essential because they provide oxygen, or Reggie is tall because he has blue eyes. Now we're testing, do, can students make that logical inference? Um, so that was my lecture on binary choice. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing how you guys are able to write out these test items in your um, content knowledge lab. Bye.